Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at another Eric Larson smash hit, Savage Dragon number 271. This comic book is completely unhinged. I cannot even tell you. I laughed so hard, probably from start to finish, when I was supposed to laugh, when I was not supposed to laugh, when I was screaming, when I was crying. It is the craziest. Dragon has been pretty crazy for a while now. But I have to say, this absolutely has to be one of the craziest issues ever. And I mean that in the best way possible. It is completely unhinged. It is totally beyond. And I loved every single minute of it. So that is what we are looking at today, you guys. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And why haven't you if you haven't? Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Clearly, this cover is an homage to some old Marvel 70s cover, but I don't know which one. Um, Savage Dragon 271. We are dangerously close to the coveted, the, um, you know, like, the pinnacle 300 issue. I'm like, I feel like that was, like, always the number, like, for Spawn and, um, you know, now Dragon based on Dave Sims, like 300 issues of Cerebus. However, if, but at least um, Eric Larson has drawn every single issue of Dragon, whereas Todd McFarlane has not drawn every single issue of Spawn. So, um, wow, okay. So this feel, I think this is the conclusion to a story. Okay, Savage Dragon by Eric Larson, Jack Morelli letters. Nikos Koutsis, Colors, Mike Torres Flats, Gavin Higginbottom, Editor, and Josh Eichhorn, Broflake. I love this uh, splash page. This looks so good. You know, interestingly, I feel like um, Eric Larson made some sort of post on socials about, um, and I don't want to misquote him, but he said something about, like, um, he still hasn't feel like um, he's reached his artistic potential in, or something like that. And I find that very interesting because I feel like, I feel like uh, Eric Larson is just like one of those well-developed artists who's been well-developed and like set in his, not set in his style, but, you know, clearly it, it has been Eric Larson for decades. So I don't know. I found that interesting. But that said, like, even on the splash page here, I notice him trying different things, different techniques, different inking, different hatching. Um, different shading and stuff. And so I'm always down for artistic expression, growth, and like experimentation. Did I already say experimentation? Or just like doing new things, you know what I mean? So we have the dragon family in the middle of this naked, like, um, I don't know, uh, parade or whatever in San Francisco. They moved to San Francisco not too long ago. Great jumping on point. That's when I came back after a long time. Um, nothing against Dragon, just I wasn't reading many comics regularly. And after reading this issue, I have to say, I completely feel left out. Like, I would just want to go back and read every single issue that I missed, because it is so good. Um, we get the, uh, the quintessential Eric Larson splash page, and this looks so good. And what I realized here is that Malcolm Dragon is kind of sexy in these short shorts, um, putting the gabosh on this, like, racist, homophobic, like, villain. Like, I cannot, I'm going to read you some of his dialogue because it is completely crazy. And just, like, so, I feel like I'm in the internet, like, um, when I'm reading him. And the wrong side of it, no less. So we have Malcolm Dragon's wife. Um, she's been, like, randomly, oh, by the way, spoilers and, what do you call it, NSFW? Like, like, not for children, trust. This is, like, totally a mature reader's book, for sure. Okay, so we have Mickey Mouse, who has been, like, um, accosting um, Dragon's wife, Maxine. Like, any chance he gets, like, sh she cannot go anywhere in public without running into this stinking mouse. I'm telling you. Eric, like, I was, like, kind of wondering, like, why the hell Mickey Mouse is here? I mean... It feels like Eric Larson, once again, if you follow him on socials, he's like, it, or if, even if you read Dragon, you know, uses a lot of public domain um, characters. He has the, obviously has interest there. Did not expect him to like immediately jump on Mickey Mouse and throw him in here. And especially in this way. And he, so Mickey Mouse is basically this pervert who just like literally attacks Dragon's wife every time he sees her in public. 
and um, he's just like a dirty jerk, right? And I'm like, I feel like Eric has to be saying something. Like, there just has to be some sort of message here. And I think I figured it out. Um, see, here's what I mean by, like, the different hatching and shading technique right here. It's like kind of like a really soft, like almost feathery kind of hatching edge. And I really like it. Colors, as usual, totally on point. Dragon is one of the best colored comics on the stands. Hands down. I love the coloring on this. And the sister book, Anne, that Eric himself colors is also beautifully colored. Where is Anne, by the way? We're waiting. We need it. I want it. Um, I, I forget the name of this villain, but I love this villain so much. He just... The way he looks, it's just like very 80s, sort of like, I don't know, almost like when, you know, like I could see him coming from the pages of like one of the DC team books, like The Outsiders or something like that. But anyway, he's like spewing his hate, full rhetoric, homosexuals, perverts, sexual deviants, drag queens, P, I'm not, I can't say that word, I'll get flagged. Um, you slide with the lowest of the low, transgenders, rapists, fornicators, masturbators, immodest women. Immodest women was the one that really made me crack up. See this hatching? This feels different for what Eric normally does. So anyway, this villain is like totally crazy. And then splang. You got to love a, guy, a good like freaking onomatopoeia, right? Um perfect example and i say it all the time you know people want to get rid of thought balloons they want to get rid of sound effects they want to get rid of captions and comics and they are all the things that make comics great where else would you get splang like that that is amazing i love it not if the bay guardian has something to say about it eric is always throwing new characters at us i love it he's got like the golden gate bridge um where his bat symbol should be um rainbow cape i'm so here for it i love it um, oh, okay, so this guy is called the Alpha Male, and then he calls the Bay Guardian a libtard. So they do reveal this villain at the end of the issue, and it's totally worth hanging out for, trust me, because, well, you're just going to have to hang out. And I don't know, okay, so there is messaging here, too. Like, Maxine's very, like, sex positive, very, like, you know, I should be able to walk around naked and not have anyone have a problem with it or attack me. Um, you know, if you're going to wear one thing and one thing only, pink fuzzy leg warmers should be it for sure. So this Mickey Mouse is just so crazy. I mean, it is so funny. And the message, I think, is that um, I feel like... He, he's trying to say that Disney is always trying to force themselves down your throat and not everybody wants it. Am I wrong? I don't know. I mean, there could be a little bit of that. So this is interesting. Parallel universe or old dragon, Paul dragon is part of it. The dragon I know and love is dead. Um, his son Malcolm is the star. They live in San Francisco. Um, he has a wife, Maxine. They have these little dragon kids. It's kind of fun because it's kind of like a family sitcom, but also like, um, uh, you know, like a superhero book, and then also like a raunchy smut mag. I mean, it's just everything. There's something here for everyone. You know, and this dragon fin was just basically like one of the first incarnations of dragon, like as a young cartoonist, um, Eric creating him and stuff. And that's how it looked before, which is, you know, kind of ridiculous, right? But um, I thought it was kind of interesting that um, especially since you know, I don't know, like, I guess we've never established, like, is, does dragon come from a species? Is he a mutant? Like, what's happening? So you would think, because all the kids have identical fins, right? And they match the dragons. I thought, wouldn't it be, have been more interesting if they had, like, variations on the fin? You know how the running gag is always like, you got the fin wrong if somebody else other than Eric draws the dragon, which, you know, I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll let you have it. It's, like, you know, Batman and Commissioner Gordon disappearing and where does he go? You know, it's kind of that. I don't know, I'm rambling. But anyway, it's fun to see the family like running through San Francisco. Then there's this side plot with Angel and her mind switch husband. And then there's this like, what is he called? Mr. Glum. 
and then we're getting like some Kirby like esoteric bullshit happening here and uh, I mean there's a lot going on but this the action in this was so non-stop and I love this too oh my gosh I execute God's will the wicked be damned this alpha male is like the best villain ever <laughs> and he is blowing away this like um you know I thought could you imagine you know like they have a lot of like you know, gay pride parades in San Francisco and stuff, and people are, like, naked or in leather and stuff like that. And to be attacked by supervillains would be crazy. And this guy get blown away, and that has to be his dick flying in the air like a disembodied dick. You are not going to get this anywhere else but in Savage Dragon, okay? So for that kind of thing alone, it's worth your three ninety nine every almost month. He's gotten on this, like, almost monthly kick. And I feel like artistically, like, we're seeing variation in the art. Um, I feel like, you know, he's, like, really having a good time and, like, sort of on a great streak and kind of firing on all pistons right now. So I feel like the enthusiasm and the fun is just, like, oozing through every page. Oozing. And when I say oozing, where is Maxine? Maybe we haven't gotten there yet. Anyway, so this dra or this dragon, it's a tiger. I don't know. It's kind of fun. It's kind of like this Calvin and Hobbes thing. So anyway, they take off Alpha Male's helmet, and I 100% thought it was going to be Ethan Van Skyver, but it's not. It's Dusty Cooch, <laughs> who clearly is like sort of an Alex Jones or something. I don't know. Maybe it's a hybrid of Alex Jones and EVS. I have no idea. But Dusty Cooch... Uh, my god that is the best name ever that is like beyond drag name beyond like adult film star name i don't even know how to qualify it classify it i'm just i i almost peed my pants straight up so then we have mickey mouse here punching maxine again <laughs> which is kind of horrifying. Like, I would have just, like, ripped that little mouse's head off by now. Like, where's the rat trap when you need it? Um, anyway. <clears throat> so, but Maxine's tough. She can hold her own. She smashes a brick on her head. I love all the people filming it. Of course they would, wouldn't they? I mean, like I'm saying, like I said, <laughs> I mean, it's just so crazy. I, it, I don't even know where to start. I mean, I guess I do. But see, like, see what I'm saying? Like, that's just kind of crazy, right? Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know the messaging there. Maybe it's just saying, like, I can do whatever I want. But this is so funny, too. I'm loving the dialogue here. He totally electrocutes the alpha male. Um, and then he's like, good Lord, he's, he's dead. Jesus, consumed by his own hate. What a complete asshole. Fuck that guy. <laughs> It's so funny. I don't know why the dialogue... It's just very, like, realistic in a way. <laughs> realistic. I've got Mickey Mouse <laughs> fighting Dragon's Naked Wife. And, um, yeah, it's realistic. But, you know, it's so good. Like, it's just funny. I love it. And people are... I mean, I don't know. You know? It's, it's, in, it's unhinged. It's crazy. It really is. But, I mean, it's just so much fun. It's beautifully drawn. There's so much action. It's unexpected. And I have to just, like, really appreciate that splash page. I really do love that. I love you for using Jack Morelli on letters. I love the lettering. Everything looks great. Great, uh, what do you call it? Letters page. Only two pages. Very modest for a dragon letters page. Whatever I have in a Greta Gearbox plot, Eric Larson, and art by Simon Mamolette St. Pierre. And I love this art. This looks great. I thought this was a really fun backup. I totally appreciate and respect and sort of give props and kudos to Eric for like, you know, working with other artists and letting them um, have fun and showcase some of their art on the dragon. He's not overly precious with it. You know, he's always drawing the main gig. Um, love this. Love these spider chicks. I forgot their name. Um, the spider twins. No, that wouldn't be stupid. Would it? No. Is it? I don't remember. Ken. Who is your... Ken who? I love this art. It's really pretty. Giving me sort of Don Simpson vibes, kind of. But really, really good. Really cute chicks. I love them. They need, like, I don't know, a spinoff. 
no pun intended. Anyway, that was so good, right guys? Run out, buy it. Do not sleep on the Savage Dragon. Like, I don't, I can't even tell you what, like it, just it, for the absurdity alone, like it, just because you, you literally know what, not, no, not, not know what you're gonna get, but it's so worth it. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and I will bring you more soon.